What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Yami Noob. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. So today we're going to be looking at my choice for basically every category of motorcycle, both new and used. I get this question all the time, especially on Discord and on Discord I'm happy to answer it, but I feel like I'm going to make this video just so I can put this link and copy and paste it and have people see it when I need to answer this question. The question is, Yemi, what's the best bike in blank category? Now, that's a hard question to answer because normally I like to ask, well, where do you live? What kind of riding do you like to do? How old are you? What do you wanna do? And I think it's gonna be best if I just go through every single category and just pick what I would choose in each category. So that's what today's video is. It's not an exhaustive like value for money or pros and cons or best of list. It's just simply the bikes I would pick if I was looking in the market for these motorcycles. Um, it's not meant to be a sort of a comprehensive video in any way, shape, or form. It's just simply my opinion on what I would pick in each category. So let us begin, but before we begin, it's not a sponsorship promotion. It's not yamminoob.co, even though you guys should be on that. It's one simple request. Smash the subscribe button. I have the turbo for my Hayabusa. I've literally purchased it. It's on the way here. It's gonna take some time for it to get shipping, but I literally have bought the turbo for the Hayabusa and at one million subscribers, there will be a glorious video posted to this channel that says Turbo Hayabusa Complete or something like that or I have my Turbo Busa. Listen, the ball is in your court now. If you want the Turbo Hayabusa to happen, smash that subscribe button. Let's get this channel to one million subscribers and let's let the memes not be dreams anymore. Let's get into today's video. For the small displacement category, the new bike I would purchase is the Spark Pillin 401 from Husqvarna. Now, a lot of you know that it is my favorite small displacement motorcycle and that's for really good reasons. It doesn't cost that much money. It's about five grand brand new. It's got fully adjustable suspension. It looks awesome. It's got uh, knobby tires and wire spoked wheels from the factory so you can definitely trundle it down some off-road. You can do on-road with it. It pops wheelies really easily. It is a blast of a motorcycle and seriously one of the best of the best in terms of new motorcycles you can buy. But if you don't wanna get a new one, the small displacement bike I would pick is a used Yamaha R3. The reason I'd pick a used Yamaha R3 over a 400 or anything else is because dollar for dollar, they're just really cheap. Um, I liked having my R3, I enjoyed having that motorcycle, and if I wasn't thinking about track days or racing and I just wanted a small displacement bike, I'd probably just pick the R3. Uh, I went online and I saw several for about 35, 3600 bucks, and that's probably the bike I would go with. So in the 650cc class, one of the most popular classes in all of motorcycling right now, the bike I would choose brand new is the Trident 660. I mentioned this in my 650cc video. I think this bike is awesome. It checks all the boxes for me. It is a very, very cool motorcycle. And even though I have not ridden it yet, many people I trust have told me it's very, very good. And I'm very excited to swing a leg over. I'm actually purchasing uh, one or maybe two of those as potential giveaway bikes. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, and then for the used category in the 650cc, I would get an MT-07. They are simply the most fun 650 class bikes. Uh, I've owned an FZ-07 and an XSR-700. I gave both of those away. And I had so much fun with that bike. I love the sound that it makes. I love the way it feels. It, kind of is weird on the side of the tire, it doesn't handle that great, but it's kind of charming because it does that. I absolutely love the MT-07 and I love that it can clutch up wheelies in second and third gear pretty easily. Uh, you can find them for about 5,000 bucks pretty much anywhere you live. Uh, for 600cc sport bikes, this one might come as a shock to you because you guys know I have my 675R that is my nearest and dearest bike to my heart. I love that motorcycle. It's race prepped. It's an absolute gem. Great motorcycle. But, but the new 600cc bike I would get is a ZX6. Now, the ZX6 right now, I think brand new, is priced so well. It's under $10,000. You're getting a 636cc super sport motorcycle. All the goodies you could want. It's got traction control, super nice handling, really good power characteristics. I've always been a big fan of the 636. 
uh, and brand new, I think it makes the most sense, especially when you consider the brand new R6 is not gonna be made anymore and it's about $2,500 more expensive. And used, I would still get a 2013 636. Uh, those are one of my favorite 600 class motorcycles. I love the way they look. I like the way they sound. They feel really great on the side of the tire. I've had the pleasure of riding two separate 636s on track, and I just love the ZX-6. It works really, really well. Parts availability are awesome for it, and it's really, really good. Uh, I would also, if I had to, I'd get a 2008 to 2016 R6 if I was gonna get a 600 class bike just because it's the classic, but I actually don't like those as much as the 636. Uh, both of those can be found for about 5,500 to 6,500 bucks. Uh, but what about 1,000 cc super bikes? What would I get? Brand new, I would get a Yamaha R1. No doubt in my mind, I would get a Yamaha R1 as a 1000cc bike, brand new. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering, oh, but wouldn't you wanna get a new S1000 RR or an RSV4 or a V4S? I still think the R1 with its soundtrack, its pedigree, its part support, its reliability, all these factors rolled into one and a sub $20,000 price point, the R1 is simply unmatched in my opinion. It is an awesome motorcycle and I absolutely adored the one that we gave away and I still think about it and miss it to this day. On track it is so flattering, it is so fun to ride. I think the R1 brand new is just simply the leader bike to get. Uh, used, had to do it to him, I'd probably get a K5 Gixxer honestly, probably the 1000 or the 750. I maybe would get the 750 because I just think it feels a little bit better to ride and I like that sort of bump up and displacement from the 600s. We are talking about 1000 cc bikes here and I think the K5 Gixxer Thou is a pretty sweet ride. It's pretty much bulletproof, it's indestructible, you can get them for pretty cheap. Um, it really depends on the condition, you can get them for about three to six thousand dollars depending on where you live and that's gonna be a super fun leader bike for you to ride around. Now in terms of cruisers, I don't have that much cruiser experience. I've ridden maybe six or seven different cruisers in my lifetime, which compared to sport bikes, it dwarfs in comparison. Um, but brand new, I really think I would get a Rocket 3 uh, from Triumph. For me, cruisers are meant to be about torque. They're meant to be about this big commanding stance of a motorcycle and very few cruisers I've ridden give me the same feeling that the Rocket 3 does. It's refined, it's this absolute powerhouse of an engine makes like 166 foot pounds of torque it is just an animal and i had a lot of fun riding it honestly i thought it was really really cool um, but a less crazy alternative would be the yamaha bolt brand new i would also get that one i think it's priced really well i think it looks really cool and it's got yamaha reliability used i would probably get an indian scout the 1133 cc kind of like the one we have being given away on yamanube.co you can find those from around 7500 to 9000 dollars and it's a really, really sweet ride. With a couple key modifications, I think the Scout makes a very strong case for itself. It's got a liquid-cooled engine, four valves, a really, really modern feeling motorcycle. Doesn't feel like a heritage bike at all. Now in the middleweight category, you guys probably already know where I'm going with this. Brand new, I would probably get a Tenere 700. I think that's simply the middleweight adventure bike to get. It doesn't cost that much money. It's bare bones, it's simple. It's everything a middleweight adventure bike should be. But used, I would probably go with an F800 GS, the BMW. Now, I know a lot of you guys know that I don't really love talking about BMWs on this channel. I'm not really that interested in them at all, but the F800 GS makes a very strong case for itself with added dirt capability over its big brother, the R1200 GS. And it's kind of a well-kept secret in the BMW family. And if you don't believe me, I'm pretty sure Fort9 has one. So if you don't want to listen to Yam, you can listen to Ryan over at Fort9 because I'm pretty sure he has one of these bikes. Uh, the cool part about the F800 GS is typically BMW boys, if they haven't completely yeeted them off-road, they're pretty well cared for and pretty well looked after. These are usually older adults who've owned them and cared for them and thought about them and had them in the garage rather than some young squid who just like kept his bike outside or something like that. Uh, for full-sized ADV bikes, brand new, and I know this will be a little controversial, but I would get the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. Now, a lot of you might say, oh, Yami, that's a 900, it can't be a full-size ADV bike, but 
To be honest, riding the Tiger 900 Rally Pro in Morocco last year, um, as compared to other full-size ADV bikes that I've ridden, it has more in common with full-size ADV bikes than it does with the smaller middleweight category. Um, it is lighter and more nimbler than big adventure bikes, but it's also not as light and nimble as a true middleweight adventure. So to me, I categorize it as a full-size ADV. Uh, it costs about $17,100, so definitely a premium price point, but I really liked the TFT dash that it has. I think it makes a lot of sense. The sort of uneven firing order triple that it has makes a very unique sound too. It's a very, very cool bike, and if you're shopping for a full-size adventure bike, it definitely deserves uh, your attention. As a used full-size ADV, it's a bit of a basic choice, but I probably would go with the 2013 BMW R1200 GS. Uh, you can usually find those for about nine or $10,000, and they're almost always ridiculously cared for and looked after. I've never seen one that looks ratty or crappy or bad. Most ADV guys don't even really ride them that much. Or on the other side, they ride them a ton. Regardless of how much mileage is on them, they've probably been cared for very, very, very well. Dual sports, let's talk about those. Brand new, I wouldn't buy a brand new dual sport. <laughs> they haven't changed in like 15 years. Uh, the WR250R is the last dual sport that's been meaningfully updated as opposed to the KLX 300 and those kinds of bikes. But I, I really wouldn't buy a new dual sport. I just think it's not worth it to go out and purchase a brand spanking new dual sport unless you are really concerned about the you know, previous owners or something like that in your area. But to be honest, they're pretty bulletproof and they'll usually run. Uh, used, I would probably get a WR250R. Now, they're very hard to find used, like a dual sport WR250R. I mean, people really hold onto these bikes. They don't sell them ever, like ever. WR250Rs are so hard to find. So because the supply is so constrained, you can really see the demand really spiking prices up. So you can expect to pay about $4,500 to $5,000 for used WR250 which really sucks. It's really not worth that much money, but it is what it is in today's dual sport market. If you want to be a fancy boy, the only dual sport I'd recommend to buy new, if you really want to drop like 11 grand, would be a KTM 350 EXCF. Those are mint. Those are very good. Oh my God, that's a nice bike, but not everyone can have that kind of coin. In the scrambler category, brand new, I would recommend getting the Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled. Of course I would. I think at $12,000, it's very value priced. I think for the features you're getting, for the suspension travel, it is a true scrambler in the sense that it can really go off-road. It's got good ground clearance. I did a whole video uh, discussing and comparing my Desert Sled versus the Triumph Street Scrambler, which are the closest in price and specs, not the big Triumph Scrambler, the 1200 XE and XE, but I wanted to compare those two because they're closer together. And I really think the Desert Sled is a cut above everything else on the market right now for the Scrambler segment. And for used, I'd probably go with a Triumph Street Scrambler. You can find these for about 7,500 bucks. I think they give you all the style and the looks of the cool Scrambler. It's got that parallel twin from Triumph and it just sounds really, really good. Wrapping up today's video for sport touring bikes, brand new, this may surprise you, I would get a Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX. It is simply the best bang for buck sport touring bike, which is usually what you're trying to find in sport touring bikes. They're not really designed to be, you know, emotional or performance oriented or this and that. Um, the 1000 SX is kind of ridiculous. It costs 12,399 bucks, like I said, it features a big 1,000cc four cylinders, got cruise control, a TFT, heated grips, all kinds of good stuff, luggage. Um, for a sport touring motorcycle, I think it's very difficult to beat the Ninja 1000. Um, it pretty much ticks off all the boxes you could ever want. However, if you do wanna go full Biscotti, uh, the sport touring bike I would recommend is the Ducati Multistrada V4. Now, a lot of you might say, oh, Yami, that's an adventure bike, the Enduro, this and that. Let, let's not kid ourselves here, right? A V4 with 165 horsepower is not an adventure bike. You're not gonna take that off-road. It's meant to be a long-distance touring bike that could maybe do 5% off-road, which any motorcycle can go off-road, really. So I, I, that's what I would categorize it at. Uh, at $25,000 though, it is quite expensive for what it is. Uh, and I think the Multistrada is only for the purest of Biscottis who really want the ultimate sport touring experience and want to be bathed in the red brand from Bologna. 
uh, used, I would probably recommend a Honda VFR 800. You really can't go wrong with these bikes. They are super comfortable. They have plenty of luggage support. They have lots of accommodations for passengers. And at $5,000 for Honda reliability and V4 sounds, you could really do a whole lot worse than the VFR 800. Uh, so guys, that's gonna wrap up my list today for all the categories here. If I missed any categories, please let me know down in the comments below. I know that I kind of lumped cruisers in all together in one big thing. I know that there's big baggers and tourers and kind of bopping around town cruisers, but to be honest, I just don't know enough about them to render an opinion on each of those. I'm not gonna say the Road King is better than the King Glide or the Electra Street Glide Special Harley, whatever the hell. Um, so those are my picks for today for the small displacement, 650, 600, 1000, cruisers, middleweight ADV, full-size ADV, dual sport, scrambler, and sport touring motorcycles. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. I am dying to turbo my Hayabusa, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Between this and my desert sled, you might think I'm just some horrible biscotti boy, but really, if you click this video right over here, I will prove to you that I love more motorcycles than just Ducati biscottis. Click it and find out.